You know something we don't do enough? We don't thank our praise team and our tech team enough for the phenomenal work they do. Can you take a moment and thank them on the cameras, running the sound system, all the work that goes into everything from song selection to transitions. Way to go. Way to go. What a good group. You know what? I think I am suffering from memory loss. I can't remember why I brought that up. Uh, no, the other day I was making eggs for Dina and me. And I don't cook ever, so don't think I'm trying to impress you. I, I know how to scramble eggs. That's it. So I, I was making some eggs. Dina was still getting ready. And um, so I uh, spooned out my portion of the scrambled eggs onto a plate. And I left hers in the pan. Uh, until she got dressed and then I noticed she was sitting out on the patio drinking coffee and so I got some coffee and I went out there not knowing I forgot to turn off the burner well by the time I went back in and I didn't remember I just went in to get more coffee well, by the time I went back into the house the kitchen was full of smoke the pan was red hot the uh, eggs were black and uh, that spatula that I left inside the frying pan was just about melted. It was a mess. And that was just the beginning. From there, I went to a bike trail to go on a bike ride. And I don't have a bike rack on my car. I just load it in the back of uh, my SUV. So I got down to the bike trail pull the bike out of the back, take off on a bike ride, I come back an hour later, open up the back of the SUV, and I feel this burst of cold air. And my first thought was, well, what a well-insulated vehicle. <laughs> that it can sit in the hot sun for an hour and contain all that air conditioned air and then I heard something anyone want to guess what I heard the car was running I yeah I had left it running for an hour I'd I'd left the engine run and gone off on a bike ride I don't know how I did that I don't know why no one stole it but they say there's some pills you can buy for a failing memory, but I keep forgetting to buy them. <laughs> well, it's one thing to, to forget about the eggs or the car, but you know, it's something else entirely to, to forget about why we're here on earth and, and what God is up to and what the purpose of a church is. And for that reason, we try to set aside some weekends each August just to recalibrate and update you as a church on our vision, where we're headed, where we are. And boy, do I have some exciting things to share today. Now, if you do uh, struggle to remember things, you'll be happy to know that the gist of this message will be emailed to you this week. And uh, also a, a video version of it is available online, a conversation that I'm having with our executive minister, Steve Green, as well as you'll be given this laminated handout as you leave today, uh, giving you some key terms from our conversation, as well as just a card that hopefully you won't throw away, that you'll tuck it in your Bible or put it someplace where you'll be reminded to pray about this over the next few days and weeks and months. If you're a guest, thank you so much for coming our way. You truly honor us with your presence. And you do happen to come our way on a, you might call this a family chat. We're sitting around the table and, and having a conversation about the state of the family. And still, we're thankful you're here. And we ask you to pray about what you hear. Maybe take an idea or two back to your church. Or if you're looking for a church, you did pick the right weekend. Because you're going to get a good 101 course in the history of our church and what we hope to be the future. Let's pray and then we'll get to work. Grateful Father for all you've done. How kind you have been to us. We ask that you forgive our speaker because his sins are so many. And help us to see Jesus, just Jesus, 
Through Christ we pray. And all the church said. Jesus said, what a huge harvest. What a huge harvest. And how few the harvest hands. So, speaking to disciples like us, on your knees, ask the God of harvest to send harvest hands. Our God is a great harvester. He's harvesting souls. He's creating for himself an eternal kingdom, and he's populating that eternal kingdom with people just like you and me. And we're grateful to have been a part of his harvest initiative now for well over 60 years. Did you know that next month, the Oak Hills Church will celebrate 60 years of existence? That's good. That's good. 60 years and still growing. Uh, according to statisticians, most churches stop growing uh, after about a decade or so, but we're still growing, still expanding, impacting people on every continent, and things are going to even get more and more exciting. A verse that has meant a lot to us through the years is Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, when Jesus told his followers, this is right before he ascended into heaven, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. We call this a trifocal vision. This is what Christ calls each of us to, a vision that sees near and then far and then farthest. His plan is that we start with Jerusalem. We start with the school we attend. We start with the neighborhood where we live. We start with the restaurant where we like to frequent. We start with the people we know. We try to love them and encourage them and be a good friend to them and pray for them and lead them to Christ. We start in our Jerusalem, but we don't stop there. We lift up our eyes and we look into our Judea and our Samaria. Now, Judea was about 45 miles away from Jerusalem. Very similar in culture, very similar in ethnic makeup, but sharing a different, but using a different zip code. Samaria, on the other hand, was not only in a different zip code, but it had a different language, a different ethnic background. There was racial tension between the Jews and the Samaritans. But Jesus said, we want you to be bridge builders into the different ethnic pockets of your city. So don't just focus on your Jerusalem. Lift up your eyes and look into your Judea. Look into other parts of your city. Look into Samaria, the ethnic pockets of your region. And he loves those who love the end of the earth. Christ has a white hot passion to harvest souls from every nation on the planet. He told his disciples what? Go and make disciples of, can you finish the sentence? Just a few nations. Oh, I'm sorry, did I misread that? Of all nations. And his vision for the end of time will see a celebration that includes people from every tribe and language and people and nation. So this is a trifocal vision. I think this is church 101, that a church should understand its region, reach to the adjacent region, and then have a passion to reach into whatever assigned population groups the Lord brings. So about 12 years ago, we as a church began thinking, now what could we do to have a more balanced, a better Acts 1-8 vision? At that time, we were one church on one campus. And so we began to pray and the Lord opened up possibilities for us to reach into the city, the hill country, and beyond. Our first opportunities came in Selma and then on the west side. And we launched a multi-site strategy. That's an important phrase. Multi-site means one church, but on many campuses. One central location making decisions, but being implemented at more of a franchise model. And so we had one church on many locations. We began with a Crown Ridge campus as our primary campus, but then started Journey and Westside. Westside was originally Fiesta. 
then we changed the name. And then we added campuses in Fredericksburg, about 60 miles north of here, Alamo Ranch, North Central, and Natal, Brazil. It's really been a fun, wonderful, trifocal adventure, and we have no desire to retreat. Today I come asking your blessing on the next generation of the Acts 1-8 vision. In a paragraph, it reads like this. We sense that God is calling the Oak Hills Church to pursue a focused and deliberate strategy to plant churches in the San Antonio Hill Country area, starting with the release and planting of our existing congregations. Our target date is August 31st, 2021. By this date, each campus will either be an independent church or declared as a mission of the Oak Hills Church. We want to transition from one church on many campuses to a family of independent churches. Now, a family of independent churches is a collection of churches uh, who operate and function as autonomous congregations but remain linked by personal relationships, by shared history, by values, and even services such as IT uh, or HR. Now, why would we do this? Why would we move from multi-site to multi-church? Well, the answer comes in the form of three words, capacity, context, and sustainability. Again, all of this will be in the email you receive as well as the handout you're given. But let me look at these words with you. First, the word capacity. Each of these campuses began as a small group, began as a handful of members, uh, began meeting in rented facilities, in one case, a hotel uh, ballroom, just a handful of people. They didn't have much capacity to do much more than unstack the chairs and welcome the guests. But you know what has happened? Over the years, these campuses have grown up. They've increased in numbers. They've appointed their own elders. They've given sacrificially to meet their budgets. They have grown up. They have stood up. They have expanded. Some of them well over a thousand in attendance. We think it is time to release them to be for others what Oak Hills has been all these many years. We envision a family of churches. You know what's happening. These campuses are behaving a lot like, oh, teenagers or young adults. They're growing up and they're starting to take on more responsibility, paying a few bills, showing that they can manage their decisions. And wise parents do what? Wise parents release them. And sometimes we want to release them too soon. And sometimes we might keep them home too soon. It's all a matter of timing, isn't it? Releasing these campuses happens when they have reached the capacity. We think they have the capacity. They have demonstrated wonderful leadership made some terrific decisions. They are reaching people in their regions, and it only makes sense that we release them to do this. We want to release Journey Fellowship to reach New Braunfels. We want to release the West Side to impact the South Side. We want the Fredericksburg folks to be released, and they're ready to be released to reach out into other towns around Fredericksburg. Alamo Ranch is telling us they're ready and eager to reach the west side, outer west of San Antonio. The north central folks need to be released to reach beyond the central corridor. Now, this could happen as multi-sites, but it seems like it happens more organically, uh, more authentically as churches become autonomous churches. And they then are released. And this is the book of Acts model, isn't it? The book of Acts models how church after church after church was planted and then planted other churches. So it only makes sense that we do this. Capacity, because they've reached, they have the capacity to do it. That's one reason. Context is another. 
So about a year ago, we began asking the question, is it time to cultivate the unique expressions of the gospel in the settings that are unique to each campus? Initially, the answer to that was no. We needed a cookie cutter. We needed a franchise model. We needed a one size fits all. We needed to all be doing the same thing on all campuses. Again, because it was all these campuses could do to, to get the nursery staffed. Uh, to get the chairs set up. They didn't want to be taking on more decisions, but as they have increased their capacity, uh, they have begun to, well, tell me, hey, we know more about reaching Fredericksburg than you do. Uh, we know more about reaching the outer west than you do. Uh, you know, may think you know how to reach the west side, Miguel Fedia tells me, he says, but no, I know who lives in the west side. Who better understands the context of a region than the people who shop in the grocery stores there, who attend the schools there, who live in the neighborhoods there. I know we're all kind of a part of the same culture, but we have ethnic pockets, do we not? The folks in Fredericksburg are small town folks. They don't think exactly like cosmopolitan folks around Crown Ridge. And the folks that Outer West, in an exploding area of our city, don't think exactly like the North Central folks just north of the airport. It's just understanding the nuances of the culture that we're finding are more and more important. So now that we're seeing that these campuses have the capacity, they're able to pay bills, they're able to build teams, they're able to preach and lead, doesn't it make sense that we acknowledge you probably know more about ministering to the people in your region than we do. Multi-siting has allowed us to establish the beachheads, but now multiplying will allow us to reach the people in that region. And with this challenge that as a campus becomes a church, it begins immediately dreaming of starting other churches. And if a campus is not ready to become a church, that's okay. We will declare that campus as a mission of the Oak Hills Church and continue to work with it until it is ready. So we think it's inevitable that these campuses are going to become churches. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a sidewalk we have on this Crown Ridge campus. Next time you're up near the outer outside baptistry. You know what I'm talking about? The outside baptistry over here uh, by the north parking lot. Notice that there is a sidewalk that cuts diagonally across that square of property. Did you know that that sidewalk was not in the original plans? It's not there. You know why it's there? Because you walked there. <laughs> you saw a shortcut. And you didn't want to walk the square, you just walked right across the grass. So when we saw the grass becoming dirt and the dirt becoming a trail, we said, duh, might as well put a sidewalk. there. They're going to walk there anyway. It's inevitable. Folks, some things are inevitable. It's just understanding the right time. It was inevitable that these campuses become churches. We knew that. We just didn't know exactly when. It's inevitable. And since it's inevitable, it's healthy. 
And the reason it's healthy is because it's biblical. And because it's inevitable and healthy and biblical, I believe it's going to be blessed. I believe it's going to be blessed as we celebrate the context of each of these unique sections of our city as we release the capacity that's pent up on these campuses to do more and do it in a way that makes sense. I think it's going to be healthy for us to become less dependent upon one teacher and distribute the teaching responsibilities to all of the campuses. I think it's great that we can celebrate our ancestry as a church. Remember, we are a church plant and what we're doing is continuing that legacy. God bless these campuses as they now begin to dream of planting other churches. So the three reasons. First reason, capacity. We have the capacity. We have the ability. Second reason, context. Just understanding the unique culture around each area. We want to take advantage of that. But there's a third reason, and that is sustainability. We want to move into a new season with a model that we think will sustain our church over the next decades. Sustainability. I think a healthy tenure for a senior minister is about seven to ten years. Over my 30 years that I've been here, I've come to see that you need about seven to ten years to articulate a vision, implement the vision, and unpack that vision. As a 60, almost 64-year-old, I've prayed and talked to my wife, and I just don't think it's time for me to sign up for another seven to 10-year stretch. I think it's time for me to return to the role that I've had for many years, and that is as a teaching minister, and then release a generation, a whole stable of capable leaders that we have on each of these campuses to become lead ministers. So as of September 1st, I'm going to go back to teaching minister of the Oak Hills Church, and we're going to uh, ordain and appoint uh, the next generation of leaders on each campus. Crown Ridge, you're not surprised. Travis Eads will be our lead minister. Jimmy Pruitt at Fredericksburg, Miguel Feria at Westside, Sam Gonzalez at Alamo Ranch, Mario Gallegos at Journey Fellowship, Brian Carruth in Natal, Brazil, Rich Ronald at North Central does not feel the call to take on the lead minister role, but he's staying there as interim until we can fulfill that role and we're praying with them. Now, next weekend, Lord willing, we will ordain each of these campus ministers with a new title and an expanded responsibility. They'll go from campus minister to lead minister. And that will mean that they will be providing leadership for everything that happens on their campus and we'll begin this, we will continue this process of getting closer and closer to releasing a campus to become a church. The soonest that a campus will become a church is one year from right now, September 1st of 2019. So this gives us a year to make sure the house is in order, financial capacity is there, and a few more decisions are made. I will, as of September 1st, go back into the role of teaching minister. And I'm going to see this as a mm, kind of a semi-retirement. I'm going to step out of the leadership roles and the decision making and focus on what I love to do. And that's write sermons and teach the Bible. And we have this great group of folks, these seven campus ministers becoming lead ministers who are then going to lead these champ campuses to the point that they will become churches. Now, Steve Green our very capable executive minister is going to oversee this process of transition from campuses into churches. Now, are you suffering from information overload? Again, you'll get all of this in an email, pick up the handout as you leave. There's a video online that explains it all. We want you to understand it. But here's that paragraph again. 
We sense that God is calling the Oak Hills Church to pursue a focused and deliberate strategy to plant churches in the San Antonio and Hill Country area, starting with the release and planting of our existing congregations. Target date is what? August 31st, 2021. So we have three years hoping to do this over the next three years. By this date, each campus will be an independent church or a declared mission of the Oak Hills Church. Again, the earliest that any campus will become a church is one year from right now, September of 2019. So how does this transition impact you? Well, I can think of a few ways. Would you join me in thanking God for his abundant provision to this church? We have just been blessed beyond what we could have ever imagined. You know, even over the last 14, 15, 16 months, which definitely has been a time of transition and decision-making, the Lord has blessed us over 300 baptisms in the last 12 months. Isn't that amazing? 300 baptisms. And did you know that as we conclude our budget at the end of this month, as we conclude our annual budget, we budget from... Uh, September 1st to August 31st. As we conclude our budget, we will conclude our budget $1.5 million in the black. In the black, not in the red, but in the black. That's good news. That's good news. We'll <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? And that's, and that's thanks to your generosity. It's, 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 it's thanks to our team managing money very carefully. And it's just most of all, all praise, all praise to God. And did you know that we are uh, of our expansion projects that we began about four years ago? $37 million expansion projects, including this sanctuary and some expansion on this part, our new building out at, outer we out at Alamo Ranch. $37 million, we have paid 22 million of that. 22 million has already been realized. Isn't that something? Now I realize that leaves us with 15 million. That is the equivalent to our annual budget. And that's always been our guideline is to not owe more than two or three years worth of our annual budget. We've got it all the way down to one year and we're going to keep chiseling away at it, chiseling away at it. We will once again, God being our helper, become a debt-free church. We're on our way. And we're continuing our focus on places like uh, Brazil, Burkina Faso, El Salvador, Mexico, and a variety of mission points around the world. So we can be grateful, can we not? how good God has been to us. Secondly, can I urge you to renew your commitment to your campus? Uh, some of you are in this room, but you attend another campus. Most of you attend right here at Crown Ridge. Can I encourage you to find your spot on the Crown Ridge campus or whatever your campus is? Roll up your sleeves and get to work. Be a part of a group, be a part of a class, be a part of a ministry, be a part of our host ministry, be a part of the parking lot ministry, help out with the babies, find something where you can plug in and be a part of it. As these campuses become independent churches, more than ever, we're going to all need to roll up, our, roll up our sleeves, write our checks, bend our knees, do our part to see these campuses become healthy churches. Can you pray for Steve Green, my good friend, our executive minister? Yeah, he's got big shoulders. He's a brilliant guy. But even somebody with big shoulders and a good brain needs the help of the Holy Spirit. And he's going to be overseeing this transition over the next, we're not sure how long it's going to take, but no more than three years of transitioning these campuses into churches. Pray for him. And this is very important. Pray for your lead minister. Pray for your lead minister. If you're a part of Crown Ridge, pray for Travis and Alicia Eads and their wonderful family. How many of you know that the devil doesn't like ministers? How many of you know that as a minister takes on more responsibility, the devil pulls out more darts? So we're going to pray around him and his family, okay? We're going to pray around him. Can I raise your hand if you promise to pray? Just wanting to make sure. If you didn't raise your hand, you and I need to talk. Let's pray for him. Let's pray for him. Let's pray the Lord would bless him with decades of fruitful service right here at, San, in, at Oak Hills in San Antonio. And then also, as long as we're praying for things, would you pray for Max to turn off the burner <laughs> and the car? 
before he starts a fire or gets robbed. I was making a prayer list. I just had to throw that on there. No, but honestly, let's pray for our memories. Let's remember that God is the one in charge, that Jesus is the one building the church. And would you join with us in this vision of dreaming of a family of church planting churches? I think the Lord talked to me a few months ago during a communion service right here in this room. I sensed him saying, it's time to get ready for the harvest. It's time to get ready for the harvest. And as we begin praying about that, we begin envisioning all these churches beginning to pop up around San Antonio. Churches that are able of reaching their region, some of whom will become citywide churches like the Oak Hills Church, positioning ourselves to receive the harvest as Christ brings them in. Can you imagine as two churches become four, as four become eight, as eight become who knows how many, 12 and 16, won't that be exciting? And we can say we were here to see it happen. Amen. So thank you, Father, for your kindness, your provision, and for your goodness. Father, the only vision that matters is the vision you give. And you've told us without a vision, people perish. And so, Father, we want your vision so that we can be alive. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. We already begin praying blessings on Travis and Alicia and his family, asking you, Lord, to encircle them and to give them wisdom and strength. Bless Steve Green as he oversees this transition process for this church. And Lord, we're excited, excited about what you will do, and we're thankful for what you have done. Through Christ we pray. And all the church said...